the French partridge mayfly. This is just one of probably hundreds of variations of this pattern. As usual, set the thread on at the eye and take 10 turns in this case and stop. Remove the waist and then prepare an olive hackle for the body palmer hackle. Strip the stem on both sides to get rid of the soft flu and then make sure that you take a few extra fibres from the side that's going to sit on the hook. Lay it on the hook, catch it in, and slide it into position so that the fibres are just touching the thread. Just two or three turns maximum. Now take the orange throat hackle and prepare in exactly the same way, again removing a few extra fibres from the side that's going to sit on the hook when you wind. Lay that in just behind the olive one and catch in and slide into position exactly the same way. Now bind the stems down the shank towards the bend and it helps just to hold them at a slight angle which keeps the turns nice and tight and even. Now remove one stem only and take two or three more turns. Then remove the other stem. That way it saves you having a big bump when you cut. That's the way. And then take the thread on down to the bend. Just make sure you avoid the barb, or the point rather, like that. And just be careful. Right now we're opposite the barb. We take half a dozen fibres of pheasant tail for the tail. Tie those in. I like them to be roughly the length of the hook, a little bit more perhaps. A couple of turns maximum. And we want to take some oval gold and catch that in. I'm tying this on the far side of the shank this time and we are going to take the thread up the body now, binding down both the rib and the pheasant tail fibre butts. Keep them all nice and straight up the shank so that you don't get any little twisty lumps underneath. Keep it all smooth, ready for the body, which is going to be fairly flat. Just supporting the hook there as we're getting a little bit uh, away from the mounting point on the vise. At this stage I'm going to trim the fibres off there of the pheasant tail so that they're roughly in line with the point where the hackles are tied in. Again keeping the underbody smooth. Again just support the hook there. Now it takes time but it's worth it, you get a really good base. One, two, three turns there between the hackles and one in front. Now take a length of raffia and strip off a narrow section which is what we're going to use for the body. Some people soak this, I don't. It can get a little bit brittle sometimes, so just be careful with it. Now catch it underneath the hook and in front of the front hackle there. A couple of turns is enough. Just make sure there's not too much waste there so it'll get buried as we finish the fly. And a couple of turns there in front of the hackle, not behind, in front of the hackle. Now wind the body material between the two hackles and then on down the shank. 
touching turns, keep it as even as you can. Work it smoothly down to the bend of the hook to the point where the tail is tied in. There we go. And now start to reverse back up. Again, even touching turns if you can. Try not to overlap them. Try and keep everything smooth. Now pull the orange hackle back and take a turn in between them again and tie off underneath and in front of the olive hackle. Two or three turns there. And we'll snip off the waist, protect the thread with your finger. Now put the hackle pliers on the tip of the olive hackle and take a turn in front of the orange hackle and then open the turns as you come behind the orange hackle and palmer the hackle down the body of the fly to the bend. Try and keep the turns even. The more even they are, the less chance they've got of working loose, although they will be ribbed. And now catch those in with the gold oval. I'm using gold here. You could substitute a brighter colour if you want. Sometimes bright colours work on the big locks over here in Ireland. Something like a fluorescent orange. A change and I catch that in two or three turns now just slice off don't snip this actually this just push with the scissors and it'll slice the stem that's the way and remove the waist oval now hackle pliers onto the orange hackle and this one goes in touching turns, working it through the olive forwards to the front. This way you get a nice blended mix of colour at the front. That little hit of orange which the trout seem to like on some, some days. Not always, sometimes they like something more subtle. Catch that in with two or three more turns now. And another one. Make sure it doesn't all twist up. Now we'll go in with the scissors, just the very points again and very carefully snip, get your finger out of the way, that's better, good, just snip that off. Now pull the fibres back with two fingers and a thumb, rather like a drill chuck, holds them in place, tidy up, make a nice smooth base for the front hackle. Now we'll prepare the French partridge hackle. This one's dyed olive, actually a bit of fluorescent in it as well. And we strip the stem to start with, take all the soft rubbish off. And then holding the tip, stroke the fibres down. Be careful how hard you do that. You'll tear them off if you're not careful, so be very careful. Gentle strokes. There we go. Now, snip off the very tip, so we've just got a short stub to tie in, there we go, and offer it up, catch it in, four good turns there, snip off the little stub, there we go. Now we'll just neaten down to the eye and come back again. And hackle pliers onto the stem of this one. These feathers are a bit contrary. Just stroke them so that they start to lay back like that. Even then winding them, they want to go almost anywhere. Just 
and firm with them and you will get control of them eventually. But they look as if they're going everywhere. But just keep stroking, they'll go back. And we'll get another half turn there by the looks of things. Yep. And catch in. Two, three, four good turns there to hold it in place. Make sure it's tight and then snip off the waist again as usual. Very tips with the scissors as always. Now we'll just give the fibres a stroke to open them up a little bit. There we go. And again, two fingers and a thumb. Draw everything back so that you can make a nice head. I'm a believer in having a head on a fly. Some people like to have no heads, but I do like a head on a fly. It's a personal choice. And whip finish. Usual way. Four or five turns. Two, three, four, five. Transfer onto the finger. Bring the needle in. Pick up the loop and away. There's the fly finished. Just trim off, push, don't cut. Spot of head cement. A little bit on the top there, a bit on each side and a bit underneath by the time we've finished. There we go, down each side. And there's the last one. When that's really dry, give it another coat. Just check the eye to make sure there's no cement in the eye. Nothing worse than that on a windy day, trying to thread a fly with varnish in the eye. And there's your French partridge mayfly. Ready to catch fish for you.